Welcome to the April 15th, 2021 risk working group meeting. We have some metrics in progress after a long time kind of working our way towards a clear picture of what, what the dependency picture would be. I think we've identified some MVPs and um, that is largely what I think we're looking to work on today. But I, before I just kick off going item by item, I thought I would ask if there is anything anyone wants to bring forward as a agenda item that is not enumerated there. Oh, I did have one and I didn't turn off my mute button. Um, in the yeah. community call this week, we were, you had brought up if you want to do a dependency session at one of the upcoming OSS or um, OS, OSPOCON, whatever they're calling it. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to discuss what that might look like, uh, given think, that we've been talking about dependencies in this form or not. I just wanted to bring it up. I, I think that is a really important thing to do because this group has done a lot of, of work to, to think through the issue of dependencies. And although our, our tasks are focused now, we have a lot, I think we have a lot to share in the history of the last six months in terms of like drawing a picture of what dependencies are. And, and so I think, yes, we should. And the question is, is there one or more sessions that we think might apply? So for example, certainly we have a lot that we've already done with regards to licensing and tracking that, that will be useful. I, I think also some of the metrics that we're developing uh, in the MVP category, um, which I will bring up just right here. Uh, the MVP, these are the MVPs that we identified and these alone, in addition to pulling, pushing forward some of the licensing work that is already published as a, a, in the metrics realm, um, these, these kinds of things, even if we aren't fully developed with the metrics, I think they constitute a pretty complete picture of a first order of things that we might, any OSPO would need to do. Um, comments on that reflection. So Sean, my apologies. I think we briefly talked, we at least briefly talked about Oh, I'm not this. sharing my, I'm not sharing my screen. Uh, okay. Um, I don't but know I, what, what, I when the right time do. is, but when we talk about the uncommon to common, I, I am concerned about the unknown or no license. And I think we talked about that before, but I do not remember what the resolution of that was. So known versus, tell, can you remind us uh, what that is? Okay, I, I, okay. so I mean, I will describe it as a possible measure, metric, but I mean, it doesn't have to be, but basically um, ratio of unknown, okay, well, ratio of unknown or no, or no license versus total, you know, total uh, packages. So are we looking? So yeah, I would say would be, unknown or unstate or or uh, either unknown or uh, none stated. Yeah, I wouldn't call this known versus unknown. Maybe we can call this the uh, the uh, un unknown rate uh, unknown license ratio. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. Anonymous, anonymous jackal, feel free to go ahead and edit. Uh, why am I anonymous? I should have logged in. I don't in. either. I don't know if I look, I don't know if I show up as anonymous. Uh, that's I weird because I, 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 I'm looking on my screen, it says Google account. Yeah, mine too. My... But, but it lists all the participants as anonymous, various things. Somebody's a quaka, whatever that is. I think you show up if you submit a comment, oh, and if you and if you choose to use your account. 
I did choose to use my account. I'm definitely logged in, yeah. Gonna widen this a bit just to show. Now that's strange. Okay, so uh, I just yeah. I just highlighted the word hello. Did that show up as me? It's more because I, I, as we edit this document, I don't want anything to get screwed up. <laughs> it, did, it did show up as you, David. Okay. Okay. Huh. Oh, yes, right. yes, yes. The comment, hello, is from you. Okay. And the cursor right after the word metric and a potential metric is me? That's anonymous jackal. <laughs> yeah, you can't explain. Wow. <laughs> okay. I can't explain it either, but it does seem to be working. So let's move on. Yeah. Okay. So basically, I, I realize this is something different. Um, but no, but I, I, to me, if we're going to do license metrics, that's the one that worries me most. An uncommon metric uh, license might be fine, but unknown or uh, or no or no license or maybe non-stated unknown or n no uh, 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 I guess not stated or unlicensed. I'm going to call them packages. Uh, that's the one that worries me the most. So this would be um, in the case of um, just an example over here. So this is Zephyr. Would this be like the no assertion? Uh, I don't remember what no assertion is. What are we looking at here? This is uh, Zephyr's risk. Ah, Zephyr's risk. Um, uh, yeah, but that, what is that being generated from? Uh, the files. It's looking That's through the license help. header for each file. It's using Pathology, the yeah. Nomos thing. OK. By the way, does OSS Health support a lot of projects? Uh, OSS Health is Augur. And uh, anybody that asks for an instance gets one. I currently have uh, four instances down because I upgraded the server and something went horribly wrong, but I'm, I'm downloading the data and we'll have it back up shortly. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so is, yeah the, no, the no assertion. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, but I would I would guess I'm guessing it's the same, but I honestly don't know. That seems Those like a ridiculously JSON. large number of. Uh, that's a ridiculously no large number of no assertions. Yeah, so I think I think it looks it looks to me as though almost all of the no assert a lot of the no assertions are shell scripts and documentation. Uh, okay. Um, looks like some header files, which are likely related to specific, in the case of Zephyr, specific pieces of hardware. So this means that it didn't detect any license headers. Right. In, in might these particular not files. not be the right thing then if it's just these files don't have, is there any way for this, does it, the script look at what it's included in? Like if it's a run file in a folder that has another file that has the right license around the project in it, then it's yeah. an applied license, but it's not yeah. stated in all the files. Yeah. And that, I'm sorry. So, so that's, so like Nomo scans the files. Um, you, you're saying there could be a license declaration within a directory that would cover the directory. I mean, is, is there a license node in every single file? Should there be? Is that, does that, that mean? Is, well, it, it doesn't have, you know, the question is, can you find a license that applies? It doesn't necessarily have to be with any file, but you need to be able to justify. Um, okay, so we're, we're drilling in. Very deeply, right. Very deeply here. Um, I mean, we can come back to this. Uh, I mean, you know, the question is what, 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 does no assertion mean? Yeah, and mean, I can. Uh, it may it may vary, okay? Because let's, uh, put an action item for me to go figure that out since I'm the one holding the data. 
one group uses, and I'll note that one group uses uh, no assertion to mean they're, they, uh, you know, uh, to mean they don't know, you know, there's a license, but they don't know which, what to al allocate it to. Right. Uh, there's a license, but it doesn't have a, an SPDX ID. They use none when there is, is no license info at all. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if that other thing you were pointing to, can mm -hmm. you, uh, what was that, that OSPOCOM? Uh, yes. No, that's. The, okay. the, the page or the, the conference? Well, uh, the, the, no, the, the, what was the, can you, can you just poke, paste in the URL that you were just showing? Yes. Um, that with the no assertions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think what's happening is, if, let's see, Augur shows no assertion. That may mean, in its case, didn't find anything since it has no separate none entry. Okay, so so I mean, you know, the, the, I think the ob obvious answer is if you see no assertion, you have to figure out what the tool means. Right. Um, it may yeah, be yes. significant. Hmm? In the case in the case of phosology, that's what it means. Like, mm -hmm. I just I literally don't know. None is a declaration of there is no license. No, no assertion can also mean that they don't want to um, do the analysis. Yeah. So it, it, it should be reported as no assertion, effectively. When you say they don't want to do the analysis, who is the we? Whoever's creating the SPDX file. OK. Sorry, I'm late. Meeting ran over. <laughs> that never happens to but, any of us. Yeah, but like, you know, I come right in on no assertion. Like, you know, gee, obviously. <laughs> So what you, you know what if 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 we say it's either <clears throat> unknown or unlicensed, would that cover no assertion as well as none? Uh, I'd say I'd say unknown, but I wouldn't say unlicensed. If it's unlicensed, you would typically say none, and if you combine them, then un oh, I see that the title's then wrong. Mm -hmm. No assertion should not be the title. I, I know I'm saying unknown and unlicensed uh, and unlicensed. Okay. Really? Uh huh. Is a different measure than the uh, uncommon. Okay. No. I, I think the theory here was that uh, if you didn't know what the license was. The known unknowns. What you're looking for here is the known unknown, the known unknowns. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, we could say we could split this out further and not licensed at all. It's got a license, but we're not sure what it is. And then uncommon. All those are risks, different levels of risk, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't I, know. I, how I, would, to, I would just, I'd, I'd actually just go unknown license ratio. I think that's clear enough. I don't think we have to say unlicensed. I okay. think, I think we can group the nuns into there explicitly well uh that's not really true because you may know for sure that it's not licensed well then so fine let's go for an unknown license ratio and no license ratio okay just two different measures yeah i'm writing this down because this goes on my development roadmap okay no license ratio uh i've got that already i thought yeah, uh, I don't think so. It's not, do we? Files with no license in them. Where is that? We have a, a so it lists basically 99.49% of 200,000 files have a license that's approved by OSI and 1,021 have non-approved OSI license. So overall so that would be of the files that are licensed and the light i have to recalculate license coverage 
Um, it looks mm -hmm. like I've got logs. When I moved it, I moved the database recently, so um, I'll reinstall. I'll make sure to reinstitute license coverage. Okay. I've been doing. Uh, ironically, I've been doing a bunch of dependency updates with Augur, and. Mm -hmm resolving the various things that stop working when we upgrade to the latest dependencies. So um, maybe it's just a byproduct of that. Mm -hmm. Be shocked if it's not. I was working on the SPDX just yesterday and there's some compiles that no longer work. Okay. So So that was so the idea was to give some to have some talks at OspoCon, and I suggested that we had done a lot of work on licensing, and that would be one talk. I think the work related to dependencies is uh, more even more current and significant. And what would we cover, or what would we collectively want to cover um, in a OspoCon talk about dependencies? And then I I pointed us to the we had identified seven uh, useful uh, minimum viable product number mm -hmm. that, that we could develop, but would, but we've also had much richer discussions. So there's like three categories, licensing, we kind of have done that. There's the minimum viable product for dependency checking. And then there's all of the discussion that we have had on the complexity of dependencies and how to measure them and how they work. One of the things we might want to do is just do a cross check against mm -hmm. um, is risk. Um, so since we're risk things, um, Synopsis is um, open source. The risk report came out this week. Oh. Have you seen that yet? I have not. I will, okay, I'll put the link to it. I know David and I have seen it because I've been flagging it yes. too. But what they did is it, they've got a nice little graphic at the start of it basically um, puts what they consider the risk factors in place. Ooh. And um, that is licensing and vulnerabilities. So licensing made its way back onto the, uh, the, the, their reports again, which was sort of amusing for me. But, Did you put um, that a link in a link in the notes or oh, in the-, yeah. in yeah. the I, 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 I just added a section for below. Uh, uh, so, oh, okay. uh, Kate, you want to paste it in there? Well, I was just, uh, uh, what I was just going to do is I have the report up in front of me. I was just going to quickly do a, a quick walkthrough with people. Yeah. Do you want to share? Do we give you I'll a share? share? Yeah. If you can right. just I'll, share. I'll stop sharing. Right. And, and Kate Stewart and, uh, has and, 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 uh, <laughs> With someone else's report. But anyhow, so this was a pretty graphic of it all. Uh, so this is all part of, let me just go back here. I like the art, actually. Cyber like, security. So like here's the um, open source security and risk analysis report. Is there, and, uh, what's the scope, Kate? Is it all open source or is it LF open source? Um, it's the scope of whatever all. they basically got in their tools to scan for the last year. Okay. So it's all the commercial all right. ones and of the code bases that they scanned, there's 1,500 code bases they scanned. 98% of them contained open source, and 75% of the code bases were composed of open source. So is the code base a project that may contain more than one repository, just for my yeah. education? Okay. Very much so. It's like all the pieces that need to come together to make something work. That's how okay. I interpret it. I think there's probably a definition in here. I think there was some definition. I'm sure they do. Yeah, but the vulnerabilities was, you know, 84% had at least one vulnerability and, and an average of 158 per code base. Mm -hmm. And then 65% of the code bases had licensing issues. Uh, just a quick, quick note, I've pasted in the URL so you can get the report Thank yourself. You. So. Okay. Yeah, there we go. The code, code and associated libraries that make up an application or service is the code base definition. And then and that, that, so this could include both proprietary and open source software. Correct, exactly. Okay. And they include dependency, a library that becomes a dependency when other software uses it. That is when software becomes dependent on that library. Is there a definition? 
and then it's turtled all the way down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, okay. But okay. they they actually they actually traverse the entire tree of dependencies. So dependencies of dependencies of dependencies, they went all the way down the turtles. That's how I read this. Yes. Well, okay. they, they went down it as far as they could with the data they have. There we go. Well done. I agree with that. Right. <laughs> That's the best anyone can hope for. Right, right, exactly. And then they sort of talk about licenses and they talk about the build materials as well as the static code analysis. So what I thought was interesting is they actually broke it down by sector. Yeah, this one's fun. I like that. I had not seen this before. Of open source by sector. That was cool. Yeah, we, and we argued about the retail and e-commerce one. So <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. How do you that's lower than I would have expected, but you know. Okay, so percentage of code base is containing some vulnerability, and then percentage of high risk vulnerabilities per code base. So uh -huh. that's a, those are high numbers, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then they used an interesting sort of scatter plot um, between the two years. What the trend? You know, which way is it heading? Um, by sector as well as um, CVEs. So, you know, we're getting that. And then we get into the licensing risks. Actually, if you can go back, go back before, before you hit the license, if you go back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, where's, no, the previous, let's see, Lo, uh, Lodash, yep. I think is, whoops, on oh, the vulnerability right. ones. No, not that one. Now the first top 10 vulnerabilities. Um, yeah. Let's see, one, I, uh, they don't identify. Lodash, I, mean, yeah. I don't have, yeah, Lodash. Uh, the funny thing about that one is that this is Lodash has a vulnerability. It was fixed in 2019. The vulnerability was found in 29% of the 2019 audits. It was also found in 29% of the 2020 audits, which means basically nobody is updating their vulnerable components. The a vulnerability gets found, nothing happens. Lodash is JavaScript, right? That's right. Yeah, the, there's a, actually a, a, I know I've encountered this with Augur, that there are a plethora of libraries that depend on that version of Lodash and the updating of the dependencies has been Unheranded. slow. It's been, it's been very like keeping the, ja JavaScript is kind of a nightmare vulnerability wise and your dependency tree is like a spider web of death. So I'm not I, I, Having a spider web is not a problem, but you know, this is probably good as time I need to talk about this. It fixes on each one. Most other ecosystems, um, you can ver you can update a lower level library mm -hmm. right away. But if one JavaScript library brings in an old vulnerable version, yep. it's brought in even if others bring in a newer version. You can have multiples okay. of the same version. Uh, multiple different versions of the same program and so it's you have to get everybody to move yeah we're actively removing we're actually we're actively creating a new front end for auger that contains no javascript oh because it's so difficult I, I, to maintain. I'm, I'm, I'm the c person here and there's a whole yeah. set of different problems there but anyhow never mind <laughs> i just oh, okay I'm carry just... forth carry forth so so anyhow you know, you can read that, but the fact that it was interesting is for after many years of synopsis not talking about licensing at all, because of the S bombs starting to come in, we're starting to see them put that back in the reports as a risk factor. Um, and it, it's actually improving. Percentage of code base with licensing conflicts has gone down over time. So, you know, this is, this is us basically, you know, making noises about we need to monitor our licensing. So if you measure it, it improves. It's, this kind of illustrates that to me. We make lots of noises about things. But. Yeah, although when you, when you look at their their scale is weird, by the way. I know. They don't yeah. give us. Yeah. What, 60 to 100% of what? 60 no. to 100. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When I, in my visualization class, I would actually teach this as a very poor graphic. Yes. Um, because but. it doesn't, your x axis is just misleading. Your y axis, y axis. I'm sorry, yeah, the y axis. Yes, uh, yes, yes, you're right. The y, although, yeah. what is a year? But yes, <laughs> the, the y axis is also misleading. The, so the y axis is like significantly misleading. To, to your earlier comment, uh, when we, I came in, 26% of the code bases were found to be using open source with no license or a customized license. Yeah, and there's, your no license and there's your no assertions, potentially. 
and, and I, I think that's uh, wrong in its face because if there's no license, it's not open source. So, <laughs> but you know, mm -hmm. a, a quibble, I guess. I understand what they're trying to say. If there's DCO sign off and somebody doesn't put a license in the file, is it considered well, part of that project? Consider the license of the project. Yeah. Uh, okay. Under practice. I mean, most projects historically didn't use DCOs. So, yeah. you know, that's not, if DCOs are not required by law. Yeah. It, I mean, that's extra padding. We're an LF project, right. so everything is DCO. And I just had a selfish question. Thank you. <laughs> Anyhow, um, with no license or custom license, and that's when they started looking at that. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. So we can say so we can say a lot about licensing and um, the vulnerabilities as well. We could also pick some projects within the group of projects that, that we're more familiar with and provide some detail mm -hmm. um, yeah. and talk about. Yeah, the sustainability yeah. is one of the ones that you do have sort of deal already, which is mm -hmm. you know when was the last time someone touched it, and what was the activity like? So little graphs. Yeah. So that uh, I'll mention while we talk about this, that we have potential, there are three students who have expressed an interest and have been working with the hackathons and workshops that I've been doing for Augur in working with the risk working group to develop these metrics that we've been talking about. Cool. And so we may be able to really get to some, some of the detail that's not possible on a, level, a report of this level and start talking about specific issues and concerns. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, it was nice to see a CII metric, you know, reference worked in there from them. Mm -hmm. And then 85% contained components that were more than four years out of date. So I think yeah. we've been sort of talking about old and stale. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I've, I've spent a good deal of time fixing the old and stale in Augur recently, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think I've ever worked on a piece of I don't think I've ever worked on a piece of software for four years. <laughs> hey. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, so there just now you guys can go and read all the details, but just wanted you to see that that was there because I thought it was pretty relevant to what we looked no. at. No, and the notes are in the and the the link is in this uh, mm -hmm. in the repos. So um I don't know what this uh Somebody started an ideas page. Thank you, whoever did that. Um, so panel discussion. The panel discussion is a really good idea because we have a lot of space to cover and a lot of great ideas and a structured presentation would be less. I mean, we. so a panel discussion is probably a really good way to cover that, this open space part. Um, Is, uh, for, so if we talk about dependencies and we propose a panel discussion for OSPOCON, which I think you know, mm -hmm. is an excellent idea, um, <clears throat> I would really like to ask like uh, Sophia and Arfan and Kate and David um, and uh, anyone else that's interested, but I think you've each brought different perspectives on this and if nobody asked questions, you would spend an hour disagreeing with each other. And I think that- <laughs> That could be fun. <laughs> that, that alone would, would be, you know, I think generate some discussion. You'd be entertained. And I don't mean to put anybody on the spot, but- Fun. We were at a half an hour, so I wanted to just jump to the gym. This is a good idea. And we have until, I believe June 13th, am I right about the ASPOCON deadline? It's better if you get it in earlier. Yeah. You're more likely to be at the top of the list to be looked at. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> and so, one of the one of our GSOC proposals actually did a really nice job of summarizing um, the different types of dependencies ooh. that exist. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to share that or not. I don't know. I don't know you're, just, you're basically trying to recruit mentors. Yeah, and and I think so. Yeah. Is it in our repo? No, it's it's a PDF. It'll be a PDF. 
it's a PDF in our Google Summer yeah. of Code repo. So, but, yeah, yeah. but you should pull a screen share and show it with all your trouble. Okay. So, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm not sharing anymore. So let me let me find it. And uh, there are some other agenda items. I don't. We want to. I think we. So do we think there's three talks, one about licensing, one about our minimum viable products and one about like a panel? Or do we want to just shoot for one or two or just one? Um, shoot for three, but with different, with different people. And then we can at least get one of them accepted. Okay. Yeah, plus one, okay. I, I don't think that everything is going to get accepted, so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. And is there thinking at this juncture? Thinking at this juncture that uh, there will be. Does anyone have a sense of um, whether it's going to be with the order? Hmm? Uh, what was that question, Sean? Uh, like. Yeah, I know Europe has been um, a little bit. Oh, I, yeah, I, I've got some back. Back so story. Do we know uh, about? It's likely the. I think it's. So it'll probably get announced next week, but I suspect it's going to be going to Seattle for the same dates, since it's easier to be traveling in the U.S. So they may just move it to Seattle, from Dublin. It's looking too hard to get into Ireland. Yeah, I've, I've heard new events going to happen in the U.S. Yeah, that's I think what they're putting in plan for. I think they'll be doing it as a hybrid event, so they'll be virtual for all those who can't come. But um, I'm on Plumbers Committee, and that's what we just got informed. So and we're trying um, to line up again. This actually doesn't disclose who it is. So um, they explain the direct dependencies, uh, transitive dependencies. Um, interdependent dependencies. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then circular dependencies, which oh, yeah. I, I don't know if this was derived from our notes or just the brilliance of this particular student, but um, it's, it's derived from real life. Yeah. yeah, real, yeah. You know, there, there are a lot of people who work really, really hard to prevent circular dependencies. And then there, there's the real world. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll just say that I have not seen anyone explain it this clearly before. Um, yeah. um, uh, <laughs> invite me to be a mentor, please. I wouldn't mind mentoring the student if we pick it up. Uh, Wait, this okay. is this is great. We were uh, having this discussion last week. Yeah. So, about how to define each of these terms, and now so we. I, I, I put all that. <laughs> they're all in the Ospokan idea. Document. I like copied and pasted that exact discussion. In the, oh, I know. Oh, for, did you copy I, and paste from this document or from? No, from our notes. So basically, I was putting together the ideas for the panel. Oh, okay. I was like, what should be in the panel? And we could talk about what kind of different dependencies there are. Wait, and... so was, was this something that they had proposed or are they pulling from existing? Yeah. Yes. This, this, this is a proposal. Has, yeah. Yeah. A student has want to do given this proposal. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, if I'm allowed, I know the student and I've reviewed this, so. Yeah, and I've worked closely with this. Like all yes. of them, there's like six students that apply that have been in auger okay. workshops and things and like okay. they know where our notes are and. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they're showing so, enough creativity to go and find them. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, so Excellent. there's. Real, real there's, risky skills. Yeah. Well, I was so just curious I, if if because like because we were spending so much time noodling on how to define each of these elements if this was another proposal because then it's if these are known concepts and discussed in that way in another forum that's confirmation for us that we're picking the right terms and then using them in the right way if they're building it off of our own notes then that's not really confirmation but has its own bias yeah so, so i don't know if um i don't know if the students on this call or can make any comments about where the materials from and if it's I assume I honestly assume it's sort of derived from reviewing our notes and participating in our meetings but I don't know that. I'd like I to think that we take popular terms but we pitch it off. <laughs> since, since the GSOC is not uh, officially announced I am like not commenting on it. 
Yeah, and I don't, I, I don't know, I don't know what the copyright provisions are around sharing, but it's a nice summary, and we have it in our back pocket. I don't know if it's appropriate. Can anybody advise me on the appropriateness of sharing those three pages of the proposal? Because I think they are very helpful. Sharing within the work, uh, sharing within the project, I think is expected. Okay. Is my read on it. Um, so maybe mailing us a PDF or something like that, or putting a link to the PDF and some, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, it's it's but yeah you know you need to invite people from the like on SPDX, we've gotten our projects into and you know we're working. The people who are mentors are fine, but we're also going to have an open session about the projects um, to see if we can get a few more mentors. <laughs> We've got some cool projects. Mm -hmm. So I shared a Dropbox link of the different mentor types. Just... Is that now? It shared the whole proposal. That can't go. Okay. I'm trying to share just the pages. And somebody deleted. Well, yeah, like right. they can't be they can't be public because it's got people's personal stuff. That's the issue. No, right? right. And and I thought I'd copied the three pages. That they failed. There's something weird going on here. The uh, that ratio of uncommon metric is wiggled around here somehow. Uh, which page are you looking at, David? Uh, the uh, cast risk working group. I just I just split them up so four and three are now separate. Okay, so metrics in progress, dependencies. This is one that we're working on. And this, you're, you're saying, yeah, that looks. Oh, okay. All right. So if you're doing that, then something like this, right? And then this is another sub bullet. So the information, the cyclical, and the other kinds of dependencies, are those categories of dependencies? Are you asking? I, I, I don't know. Who are you asking? Uh, this... The group. The thing yeah. I shared with the three, with the still four diagrams the direct dependencies, the transitive, the interdependent, and the circular are those. Um, those are types of dependencies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we have any metrics that depend on that. Those are just ways to define the kinds of dependencies, but I don't think we have metrics that. Uh, use any of that. Yeah, I think when it comes to a presentation, for example, at OSPOCON, it might be good to have some examples of those sorts of things mm -hmm. and help people understand the differences. Because like I said, I hadn't seen it explained so clearly before. And probably, yeah. You know, I mean, I think examples are always fun. So if we want to pick a project, it has to be a messy project or a big one with many arms. But mm -hmm. if we're going to be presenting on these kinds of dependencies and give examples, then it would be make sense to be consistent in that. So if we pick a project and then try to attempt to measure all of these kinds of dependencies and basically put our metrics to the test, um, that could be kind of a, a real world scenario how you might instrument something like this. Yeah, whenever I want to present something that, that's got like lots of complexity in a single project, I just jump to Kubernetes. I was almost like too much. I... Yeah, Zephyr is a good example as well. Zephyr has, and Zephyr also has runtime dependencies that are critically important. Um, 
That's always a good example. We also have repos we also have a just a general collection of repositories that we could do the analysis on. I mean, I would assume it would have to be a project that we have a good relationship with so that we could get comments from yeah. someone who can say how these things are being addressed and or treated. Because then there's sort of the, the risk level. So the story is we can measure all these things, but what elements make it more or less risky to the sustainability of the project, to the project users, to the project contributors. And then, mm -hmm. then you have a story, but we don't have a story unless we have that view being expressed. I've been, I've been talking with some of the automotive grade Linux folks lately, and I think they have a story. Um, I know Zephyr has a story. Mm -hmm. um, I think UNICEF has a story um, as well. Wow. So there's definitely stories we can tell along these lines. Um, and it's just, I suppose, maybe uh, we have seven minutes left. I don't know if we're going to get to the conclusion, but maybe an agenda item for next week is to sort of try to Maybe our homework is to try to determine um, what, what our proposals are going to be for OSPOCON. So it sounds like, to me, it sounds like there could, at least on the dependency side, be two. I think one should be a panel, which is really talking about the dependency work that is coming from this group. Yep. So just how we've been thinking about dependencies, what has been accomplished to date, and what kind of the future concerns might be. Yep. And then it sounds like there was another one kind of emerging here, which would be doing a deeper dive on looking at a particular project's dependencies. And that could be a talk where it's maybe a joint talk where it's somebody from this group, probably you, Sean, with respect to Augur and probably somebody from the project that could comment on like what, what this means to the project, what this means to, to this person, like how this is interpreted. Yeah, I become kind of a statistician in the terms of telling the story, uh, it, you know, except for projects I've worked a lot with like Zephyr, well, Zephyr's, you know, and automotive grade Linux and a, a few others. And in those cases, I've worked on a lot of cases with companies that have a lot of like thousands of projects. And, and then those, those become less stories that are understandable and more like executive level. Uh -huh. Not wanting to derail this conversation completely, but I just oh, wanted do. to <laughs> wonder, do, I wonder if folks are interested in like, um, undocumented dependency, so like clone detection in projects. Um, so where you've got, there's a pe dependency, but it's not expressed anywhere. Um, I ask because actually I've been doing some work on that recently using the special type of like content hashes like SSDeep to go look for or, sequences of code that you know, you know you've got a dependency like in the source code, but it's just not actually expressed formally, but it is in there. Well, I I think I'm tracing like, those. Augur has an, one undocumented dependency. It's a Boiter SCC for code counting and code complexity counting, and it's a Go program. And it's it wouldn't show up in any dependency detection. It's just a library we call to populate a table. Well, wait, wait, wait. I, 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 there's some terminology confusion here. An if application, copy, I should say. Yeah, That's if it. you if you take a copy and copy it in. Uh, the usual term I'm familiar with for that situation is vendoring, uh, where you've taken a copy, you've copied it in, you're no longer dependent on that project. Because mm -hmm. if that project oh. makes a change, nothing happens. Sure. So um, I, I would not call it, an, 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 whereas an undocumented dependency is the code's getting pulled in, say, at runtime, but your tools can't tell. Maybe, for example, at runtime, it figures out a name and then starts calling it but there's no way your tools could figure that one out um as far as the vendoring stuff goes there are some companies that do that um i believe is it sonotype can actually manage to do that uh i i will say that we actually uh I, with an organization i was working with um i mean what they wanted 64 gig of ram 
in their <laughs> so to to run their tool because oh. it it, tur it turns out that analyzing big code bases and trying to figure that the vendored stuff um, mm -hmm. automatically is hard. <laughs> Arfan, mm -hmm. Arfan, can you right. tell us a little bit more about what you mean by undocumented dependencies? Just so. Well, that... I do. I think vendored is right. I was thinking. I'd forgotten um, that. Like when we think about dependencies in this sense, we're thinking about resolving dependencies and you know at build time that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. I'm just, um, especially when you start to think about understanding what code you have in your stack and so like license compliance and all that kind of thing it, it it's sort of understanding the origin of the code and vendoring workflows i think are um is it important the whole, is it the um, wholesale um, reliance on other applications in a sense um i could just be i mean maybe but it could also just be something as simple as um I mean, so we see this, um, the security team at GitHub are worried about this right now because we see people, you know, there's some kind of vulnerability that some, there's some snippet of code that's floating around and moving between projects that actually you want to track that. Like a so, gist, like something It's not rates. even as standalone as that. It's something, maybe somebody's injected some kind of vulnerability into a build process. Um, and so it's an, and so it's basically a a, a a snippet of code that exists. Uh, so that's like a security version of this. But 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 a but another one would be I copied in jQuery 1.7 and I stripped out all the headers and now it's in my software. Now I have code vendored vendored, but not but sort of by hand. And I was just thinking about those those kind of dependencies. But I recognize this maybe a different thing. So, what about yeah. Anyway. Oh, yeah. I'm imagining a ma like an AMP script or a Maven script that does something that causes trouble or is a dependency. Is that kind of what you're talking about in this second case there? If he's speaking, he's speaking muted. And so while he's not, while we're waiting for him, I just want to bring up the concept of a build dependency. And you're depending mm -hmm. on a certain compiler. And that's not necessarily documented in your dependency trees, but you're not going to compile unless you use a GCC, something like that. Certainly encountered that a lot lately. Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, that's a, an active topic right now where the Linux kernel is talking about supporting Rust, but um, uh, there are architectures which the Rust compilers doesn't support. And they just finished doing the transition from GCC to getting LLVM to actually work. So, so it was a dependency up till this point that it must be GCC. Um, Zephyr's going through the same sort of journey as well. Yeah, and Augur has had some things break on LLVM recently also that have been fixed, but new versions required. So yeah, this whole this whole working group's become so real for me in the last month. <laughs> um, we are at time. Uh, I think we have a really good set of candidate presentations for OSPOCon, and I encourage anyone that wants to work on you know, fleshing any of them out in the next few weeks uh, to do so. And maybe we'll try to lead with making some decisions. And if anyone wants to start. Um, the application process, uh, feel free to reach out to those in this group and, and start it up between now and uh, two weeks from now. And um, we'll, we'll try to get maybe try to get that fleshed out and submitted um, in our next meeting in our next meeting and possibly even get to some metrics, who knows. But I think we are at time. So I will say thank you very much, everyone. And uh, this is the end of the recording and the end of the meeting. And um, I will uh, stop sharing my, stop sharing my screen to figure out what the stop button is to record. Okay. <clears throat>